okay guys welcome back to another brand new video now uh, today well today we'll be talking about the ESP8266 chip and the upcoming videos I have so if you've already seen the title of this video you obviously know what this is going to be about but before we get into that I'll be showing you a little bit about the chip how you can obtain one and how you can have a chance to actually win one of these chips so Let's go ahead first and um, as you can see here, this is the ESP chip, so a little bit of what it can do. This chip pretty much can host a web server for your uh, PS4 exploit, so pretty much it cuts out the need for a computer or the need to connect to online services as this chip will be hosting your web server like locally on the chip. You just connect to it via Wi-Fi and the chip is powered by the PS4's USB port. So it's pretty pretty simple to use, pretty self-sustaining. I'll get more into that later into the video and I'll show you how to set this up and how to actually program it. You know, to show you now, make it easy. This chip can do pretty much everything you can do with um, like the normal web kit uh, exploit host. So, you know, our Zeef's exploit host, he actually makes the software for this chip as well. So it can do anything that's in there. You can add your own custom payloads to it. Whatever you want to do, dump games, modify games, um, install homebrew, hen, whatever. This chip will do it. Now, um, if you guys want my one specifically, look, they're pretty cheap. They're like $10 on eBay, depending on where you buy it. So these are some of the ones that come up available. If you want the specific one that I use, this is the one that I'll be using. This is probably the best one there is out there. And uh, if you guys want a chance to win one of these chips, or if um, you're not con convinced that you fully want these yet, Stick around, watch all my videos, and make sure um, you check everything out. I might have something in there that interests you. And if you want a chance to win one of these, but you don't want to buy one, you should head over to PlayStation Hacks website, where uh, all you have to do is enter into this competition. So PlayStationHacks.xyz, I'll have a link in the description for this page. Uh, pretty much, I'll read it for you. So essentially, all you have to do is Photoshop the PlayStation Hacks emblem onto an image of something that resembles PlayStation in any way, shape or form. So as you can see, I've created mine here. I'm just gonna enter into the competition now. I've already got one, but you know, why not enter into the competition? I suggest you guys do the same. So as you can see, I'll just write, here is my submission. You need to uh, upload it to some image hosting website like imja.com, pretty easy. These guys host images for free. Um, so you click away on the whale, you don't want the whale, okay, go away. And then you click new post and just drag and drop the image into here. It'll create your post. As you can see, it's uploading it. Now this doesn't have to be public as you can see you've got post privacy so it's hidden so only people with the URL can see it which is fine and it's in so we don't want any tags we don't need any of that so what you're gonna do is right click on this and you're gonna go to open image in new tab so there's our image you're gonna right click on that copy image and you're gonna come back to where you're posting it and just post it underneath so there's my image so I just went control paste and I pasted it and we're going to submit the reply and that's pretty much it guys that will enter you into the competition to win this chip and uh, yeah good luck if you guys want to win it and good luck if you guys are following my tutorials there's a couple entries in here already so um, wish you guys all the best and I'll get back to you in just a moment alright guys so in today's specific video I'll be showing you how to flash Codemasters exploit host onto your ESP8266 chip. Now, this isn't as hard as you would think. It's actually, it's actually quite easy, to be honest with you. So um, I'll show you how we need to get started. So firstly, you will need to come to this page, which is his release page. I'll put a link to this in the description. You're gonna scroll down to here where it says downloads. So at this current point in time, these are his most up-to-date payloads. So if you're on 5.05, .05, then version 2.7 is fine for you. If you're on anything below 5.05, .05, so for example, 4.55 or 4.0, he's just released some extra features for 2.71, so you might want to check that out.
I have 2.7, which is um, fine for me because I'm on 5.05. So it works for what I need it to do. And I'm pretty sure it has most features. The only thing that he added is a couple bug fixes for 4.05 and 4.55 offline installers. So if you're not using the offline installers, I wouldn't worry about that. Um, if you are, then there's a little bit of other things like you need to do an Ethernet loopback plug. Otherwise, the exploits won't work. Uh, I don't need to worry about this because I'm using the f um, older version, the 2.7 version. And um, yeah, so this will be the last version with 4.05 support. So I think um, I think that's enough for today. We'll just use 2.7. So if you'd like to go ahead and download this, you can just click the link here and it'll open up a new tab. And it's a mega link. So just click on the download button and you can download the file so it'll do its thing it'll initializing but whatnot all right and then you'll see it come up down there so that's my file that's been downloaded now i've already downloaded this i'll show you in a moment and um you're also going to need something else called the uh pi it's actually like the flashing tool so it's a node mcu pi flasher so depending on what version of Windows you have, or if you have a Mac, you need to select your version. So if you have a 64-bit OS, you choose this one here. If yours is Windows, if you have a 32-bit OS, you choose this one here. If you don't know what yours is, um, I would suggest you go with this one first. If it doesn't work, try this one. And if you have a Mac, well, you need this one. And then there's other things here like the source code and whatnot. So I use the 64-bit version, same deal, just click it and wait a moment it'll download like it's done down there now I've already gone ahead and downloaded these files so I'll bring that over here as you can see I've got my files here so I don't need that so this is what it'll come up as you need WinRAR to extract this zip file or you might not actually Windows has that built in now so um, you can use whatever WinZip thing is and just open it up yours might look different to mine because you're not using WinRAR, unless if you are using WinRAR, then it'll look the same. You want to get this file and copy and paste it to the folder. So just like that, it'll come up as 2.7.bin or 2.71 if you're using the 2.71 version. And that's that. Now I've got another one here. This is another one I was trying, but I prefer the Codemasters version. It's up to you guys. There's plenty of different firmwares you can get out there. Just Google it. Um, I would say only install them from reputable sources and yeah that's um that's pretty much it I'm not responsible if you break your chip they're only 10 bucks anyways so it's up to you how careful you want to be with that now what you want to do is if you're ready you're going to plug in your ESP chip into your PC okay and you're going to just wait a moment let it like connect and whatnot and now we're going to open a node mcu py flasher so this is a standalone application as you can see it's just there on its own same as here okay so you're going to click on this no need to run as admin just let it open it'll come up like this okay now you're going to press this refresh button here a couple times and then you're going to click this box here. So as you can see, I've got COM1 and COM5. Now if you've got more like me, instead of just one, if you've got like two or three, I'll show you how to figure out which one's your chip. So take note of what's in there. We've got one and five for me. Now if I unplug the chip and then I refresh it a couple times, we've only got number one in there now. So if I put that back in and I refresh it again, we've got one and five. So with that being said, our chip is there. I will select number five because that seems to be my chip. And now we want to select the firmware that we want to flash. So we're going to press browse and it should come up to the folder that your uh, program is in. If it doesn't, that's fine. Just navigate to it however you would and click on code masters ESP 8266 exploit host 2.7.bin or 2.71.bin whichever you're using or any other firmware that you are using any of them will work double click it now it's recommended if you're using one of the official chips that you use the quad QIO um, most of the replica chips use the dual IO my one works with both so I use dual IO and it's recommended to use the board rate of 9600. I just use this one because it's a lot faster. So 
you guys can go ahead and go the recommended way if you want or you can do what I do whatever you want to do as I said before I'm not responsible for anything you do you're just following this tutorial for education purposes now you're going to want to wipe all the data make sure you click that so that it wipes it and then it writes to it so make sure again that you're 100% sure that this is your COM port before you proceed and then once you're ready you're going to press the flash node MCU button so it's going to connect, you're going to see your MCU flash a couple times. Then it says it's erasing the flash. This might take a while. So we'll just wait for it. And as you can see, mine is writing now quite fast because I chose the fastest uh, write speed. So I might just speed up the video here. Alright, so now that that's pretty much done, as you can see it says leaving and then done, that's it, you're good to go, so you can close the application now, you don't need that anymore, your chip has now been flashed, so now we can go over and unplug it, and we can plug it into the PS4, so bear with me one moment, I'll be right back. Alright, so I'm back now, now I will be showing you what we need to do on the PS4 once it's plugged in. So you're going to have to just go as you would, like if you were using a normal exploit host, go all the way to your settings and open up the settings and you're going to want to scroll down, oops, scroll down to network, I just went too far, bear with me one second, alright so go into network and you're going to want to populate it with the details I'm going to put on screen now. So you're going to go to uh, set up internet connection and you're going to want to use the credentials here. So he tells you here the AP which is the Wi-Fi name is ESP8266X exploit host and the password will be PS4 exploit. So just follow along with me and I'll show you how to do it so you're going to want to go to use Wi-Fi okay and remember you're gonna click easy and we've got our information here so I'm just gonna pop this on another screen okay so you're gonna scroll down until you see the one that you are using to sign in with so once you get there click on that and you're going to want to enter the password, which is, when it comes up, PS4 exploit with E, sorry, no EX, it's just XPLOIT. Now, because I've already done this, it's not going to ask me for the password again, as you can see. But if it's your first time, it will ask you for the password, so just enter it in, and you can go from there. Now it's going to ask you to do a quick test, just let it do its test, it only takes a couple seconds. As you can see everything was successful up until PlayStation Network, that's fine. You don't need to do anything else from here, you can back out of that. Now, next thing is you're going to think, okay cool, we're connected, now we can just go to user guide. Well, no. For some people that won't work straight away, for some people it will. So I'm going to show you how to fix it if it doesn't work. Now. For me, it should work because I've connected to the network. So if we go in here and into user guide, I can see my um, chip flash, which is fine. Um, so this is what it would look like. If yours doesn't look like this and you get like an old version of the exploit or something else that's been cached, well then you need to reset it. So to do that, you press the home button, you go to the internet browser in your PS4. Now, if you don't have your internet browser enabled, you will need to run the exploit host locally first and use the um, actual tool that they have in there, the payload, which enables the web browser for your account. Do that and then you'll be able to use a web browser to reach this. So you're going to want to make sure that you go to the hyperlink and you type in http dot slash or colon slash slash manuals dot playstation dot net slash document slash en slash ps4 and slash index html just like that 
and it'll take you here. So it'll refresh it and um, it will no longer be cached with the old version and that's fine. If it doesn't do it, make sure you restart your PS4 at some point and try again. And then once that's done, it should be fine for you to go into the settings, user guide and then user guide again and it'll open up like this. So as you can see, we'll launch the mirror hen just to show you that it works. So we'll click that. It'll give you an error. Just press OK. And then it'll try again. Alrighty. It's not the most uh, stable exploit, but it looks like it's worked this time as we got this uh, error message. So it doesn't matter. They can't see me. So just press OK. And it says you're all set. Great. So press the home button and um, as you can see this is homebrew. It's got the locked icon. I'll open it. There you go. Okay guys, so I actually had some problems with that specific homebrew application. The PS4 had a kernel panic. I would say it's probably because uh, that homebrew application is encoded for this version of firmware 5.05. .05. It worked fine on 4.55. So just to show you that this does work for other things, you can see here it's all set. Um, I'll prove to you, we'll go to settings and uh, we'll install a package. So debug settings, game, package installer. And I've got a couple things in here. So let's just install. Hmm. We'll install the Until Dawn. Actually, I install one of my themes from one of my previous tutorials. Why the hell not? Okay. So you can see it installed. And uh, if we press the PlayStation button, that's my theme there. Apply it. And as you can see, that's it. That's pretty much it. Um, if you want to see it loading a game, look, the lock icon is gone now. Start Time Crisis up. It'll load Time Crisis because this is a game and it's not like firmware dependent. So we'll just wait for it now. It'll give you this error. Don't worry, just press OK. And there you go. Show you the PlayStation 2 icon, Namco. And. It'll ask you to load. If it's your first time, it'll ask you for your memory card and whatnot. And that's pretty much it. Okay. Seems to be working fine. You guys can see. Now, uh, if you guys have any questions, please make sure to drop a comment down below. Otherwise, I guess that's it. I will be making more tutorials regarding this ESP chip. I've also got a tutorial coming out on how to dump disk games and how to make them into game packages. So stick around for that and uh, let me know if you want to know anything and I'll try and make a video on it. Catch you guys later, alright? Peace.